Hello everyone and good afternoon. Thank you so much for attending TalentQuest's webinar and mid-year reviews. My name is Dina Klossick and I'm a member of the communications team here at TalentQuest. We're really excited to spend the next hour with you discussing mid-year reviews as part of your talent management strategy. Um, just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. After the presentation, we will have time for a brief question and answer session. Please send your questions via the question box that appears at the top right of your screen. Also, after the webinar, we will forward a copy of the presentation as well as a recording to everyone. Um, so to get started today, our presenters are Kelly Pappas and Hema Perez, both members of the Client Success Team here at TalentQuest. Kelly is the Director of Client Success with over 14 years of experience in the HR consulting industry. Kelly has a broad range of talent management and consulting skills with specific expertise in client retention strategy and project management. Hema is a client relationship manager and is responsible for driving client satisfaction and growth. With extensive client and account management experience, she ensures the success of the client relationship through system implementation, client training, process consultation, resource management, and ongoing support. She works to deliver quality customer service by understanding the client's and talent quest's strategic initiatives. Both Kelly and Hema have some great information to share with you today. I'd like to welcome them and turn the presentation over. Good afternoon and welcome, Kelly. Welcome, Hema. Hi, good, good afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here. We are very excited to be with you this next hour covering a very timely topic as we approach mid-year. Um, mid-year reviews. To do or not to do? That is the question of the day, of the hour, and that is likely why you are all here joining us. So thank you for your time. Uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about mid-year reviews, and we will cover, if I can click to the next slide, what a mid-year review will ultimately accomplish, what a mid-year review should consist of, and how do we get everybody on board with this idea. So Hema and I have uh, kind of been remarking to each other and, and amongst the team here, how many of our clients are adding mid-year reviews to their agendas these days? Um, and so we thought, you know, let's do something a little bit about, we get questions all the time asking us, what should these look like? Why should we do them? Um, you know, most of my team doesn't even want to do annual reviews. How am I going to get them on board? So that's what we're going to cover. And uh, if, as Dina mentioned, if you have any questions, just type them into the question box and we will get to those at the end. So before we get started, I want to ask and poll our audience a quick question and ask you, um, how often does your organization currently conduct formal reviews? So you should see a little poll box in the top right of your screen and let us know, does your organization currently conduct them annually, biannually, quarterly, more than quarterly, or never? Take a minute to get your responses. Okay. Dina, can you let us know what we've got here? Sure. Let's go ahead and close the poll. Looks like we've got close and share. And there are your results. Okay. So you'll have to let me know. I don't see them on my screen. Can you let us know what we've yes, got? Yes. It looks like 58% uh, of everybody um, that has voted said that they do an annual performance review, and 43% of voters said they do it biannually. Okay, not a surprise. More than half of our audience here is currently doing them annually. Some of you do them biannually or more frequently now. Um, so we're gonna jump right in and get to our next slide. And let's talk just about the idea of annual reviews. Um, you know, we hear all, over and over again, annual reviews, once a year reviews just aren't working. There's a couple different reasons that we hear why these aren't working. Um, but in particular, the ones that come up most regularly are the fact that they're annual. They're too infrequent. You've got 12 months of performance to summarize in one hour. It all comes down to that one session. And you know what? You might have had a bad couple of months. You might have had a great couple of months. And your manager is only thinking about those, those recent few months because who can remember past um, a few months ago? I can't remember what happened yesterday. So um, that's the recency effect and it's pretty, pretty standard, pretty normal. Um, you know, take the, consider, take the uh, scenario of you have a great performer who had 
you know, a couple things come up in their life recently. Maybe it's personal. Maybe they've just had a heavy workload. They've dropped the ball on a few things. Well, when you get to that point in time and you start evaluating 12 months of work, you really just, you're looking at what happened recently. And, and you've got the opposite scenario too, where um, you've got a pretty poor for performer who just in the past couple of months has, um, you know, not been knocking it out of the park. And it, it's kind of a fluke. So, so the recency effect and this Raider bias and the fact that they don't happen frequently enough are part of the problem. They just aren't working. Um, and the other thing, you know, it's also when you have something on the calendar, you know, as a manager that you have January 1st, January 15th, whenever your timeline is, you've got that review scheduled, then, you know, as a manager who's got a lot going on on their plate, a lot of things to worry about day in, day out, they might be saying, you know, I've got that review coming up, we'll address it then. And that takes away a lot of the effect of performance reviews as well, because by the time you get to addressing it a few months later, you know, you're past the point in time when it can actually be effective feedback. So here's a, um, just my favorite little Dilbert cartoon. Um, she's obviously going through this same scenario. Her review happens once a month, and then, of course, her boss is giving it to her late. So she's, um, you know, she's saying, it's been nine months, and all you did was sign what I wrote. And he says, yeah, I think I also read it, but I'm not totally positive. It's just not effective, right? And we've got Aubrey Daniels, who's a, um, who's a psychologist and also known as the father of performance management, who even he is telling us, he says, you know, the, the biggest problem with these reviews is that they're not happening frequently enough. Um, so the last kind of point to talk about here before we summarize all this is engagement. You know, engagement is a hot topic, of course, and um, one of the three leading drivers of engagement happens to be, no surprise here, management and having hands-on managers that are available and and doing the right things. And so what does that mean exactly? Well, our hands-on managers to be effective <clears throat> are setting goals, they're setting clear goals, and they're setting timely goals, goals that make sense currently. Um, and also that we're checking in on those goals and getting updates on those goals regularly. Um, we can set goals at the beginning of the year with the best of intentions and they can be clear and they can be relevant, but six months down the line, a few months later into them, they can change. Businesses change. We are in a very fast paced um, market, environment, culture, and it's important to keep them up to date and make sure your managers are communicating with their employees about those goals. Do they need to be changed? Do they need to be evolved? Where do they stand? Um, also, to have hands-on management that's effective, they need to be providing regular ongoing feedback and giving you point-in-time um, feedback to help you continuously improve and, and, and adjust to the, the time and the issues that you're facing at that moment. And then lastly, they need to be able to show you that they're investing in your development. They need to give you opportunities for training. They need to see what you're doing currently and help you develop those skills. And that's a lot, uh, kind of what it boils down to, to have hands-on management that can really foster engagement. But how, how can we have and how can we promote and support that type of hands-on management when we're only asking our managers to provide feedback once a year? Um, so is the answer adding more reviews to the process? Well, you know, it sounds counterintuitive, but a mid-year review does a lot of things. Um, it's going to help reinforce and drive the behaviors of your management team. You know, we are telling them we want you to do regular feedback, we want you to check in regularly, but then we're not holding them accountable. So adding one additional review to the cycle can help formalize and start build in that best practice type of behavior. Um, it's, of course, also going to ensure that your employees' goals are on track and that they're still aligned to the organization's goals and the changing needs of your business. Also, you know, engagement. Um, employees who get feedback and know where they stand are much more likely to be engaged and they're much more likely to be happy with their managers. And then, you know, ultimately, that also helps fix the annual review, which all those things that are broken about it with just, you know, 12 months summarizing in one hour, well, now you've got a midway checkpoint. You can adjust and help, you know, correct behaviors that need to be back, put back on track. 
You can help adjust goals that need to be adjusted. So that way, when you get to the end of the year, you know, you know where things, things there are, there aren't surprises there. It's just another check-in. All that being said, you know, we've got to make sure that, um, that we have the right format and that we're executing that rollout of this process effectively. Like I said earlier, you've got management and employees who gripe about the annual review and now you're saying, let's add another one. So, so how are we gonna get that adoption and how, what's the right content layout and format for that review? And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Hema who um, has worked with lots of clients recently to talk about how these for reviews should look how should we coach our managers to um, have these conversations? And what kind of format and, and process should they really, you know, should they look like? Should they, how, should they, how should they work? So let me pass it over to Hema, and she can take it from here and let you know a little bit about what she's seen that works well with her clients. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Um, yes, yeah, Kelly mentioned I would like to share with you what um, my experience with my clients, what has been working. Um, and you know the things that I've seen. So I'm going to be talking to you about what um, a mid-year should consist of. Um, most of the, the things that I'm going to say, I'm sure you've already, you know, you've heard them before, but it's a good, you know, reminder that this is how a successful process is. So as you can see on the screen, you know, mid-year review should summarize, celebrate, challenge, and inspire. Um, so I'm going to go through all these sections individually, um, but these are the four main points that your manager should have in mind. Um, the first one is summarize. Um, so, you know, basically, um, the manager, your manager should come to these mid-year reviews, which I would like to call conversations more than just reviews, uh, with no surprises. Um, they should know how their employees are doing, the direct reports, and the direct reports should know how, uh, you know, that feedback is. Um, these meetings should be ongoing conversations, and again, there should be no surprises because everybody knows what's going on. Um, these um, conversations or meetings should also be focused on, you know, engagement, you know, circle back of what has happened during the last six months, check on the goals, you know, that were set up at the beginning of the year, any developmental plans. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, you know, we added um, a few questions. These are just questions that you can share with your team and, and, and managers so that, you know, this conversation, um, it's open. So managers should ask questions like, what goals and objectives you know have been accomplished so far um what goals and projects still need to be accomplished and maybe you know the direct report is you know really busy working on other things and the manager should be aware that you know the goals are not being met but not because of the direct reports fault for example or you know also which goals are no longer relevant or high priority you know as kelly mentioned there is a lot of change going on and maybe the priority six months ago uh, you know it's not a priority right now so should these goals be revised or removed or you know updated. Um, so this is um, you know something that the manager should um, have in mind, and the, the direct report should feel that they can share these with their manager. Uh, the next uh, point would be celebrate. Um, so I know that every time we you know we hear reviews, uh, you know in my experiences that it's it's almost like a negative term. Um, you know you're going to you're going to hear a set direct report. You know the things that maybe you are not you know doing well. Um, in my experience, you know, with clients is that in these mid-year reviews, especially, you have to focus on the strengths. So this conversation, this review should at least be 75% focused on the strengths and at least 25% focused on weaknesses, because, of course, you don't want to forget those. Um, but yeah, celebrate. It is time to, it's time to see where your direct reports are and it's time to, to see if there any opportunity for development, but also focused on the positive more than the negative. And also uh, be specific. There is, you know, you can provide good feedback. You can say you're doing a great job, um, continue doing what you're doing. But if this feedback is not specific, it's not valuable. Like direct reports, you know, employees, they want feedback that it's specific. They want to see that the manager is paying attention, that the manager knows exactly the type of work they're doing um, and that it's um, that they have a specific examples, um, you know, to those positive statements. So I'm not sure if all of, if all of you are telling Quest um, system, system administrators or users, but I just wanted to point out you know, a feature that the system has that um, you know, if your organization is not using, you know, it's very helpful. Um, so this feature is the performance journal. You know, if you know the system, you will see that you know, that link is on your homepage. You don't have to navigate anywhere. You log into TalentQuest and it is right there. 
Um, this is a great feature that can solve several problems. Um, the main one, you know, as Kelly mentioned, is we can only forget, you know, we can only remember what happened two months ago. Using the performance journal will allow your managers to to make entries and make notations and add comments to everything that happens throughout the year or throughout you know, these first six months so that when they have these conversations or at the end of the year, they can come to the performance journal, they can export it in PDF and they will have, you know, all the comments, all, you know, the information, um, you know, that happened throughout the year, throughout these six months available to them right there. Um, you know, just to add to that feature, you know, managers can also share to, can also choose to share it with the individual, you know, if they want to, if it's, you know, if it's positive and they want to make sure that the direct reports knows that the manager, so, you know, that they did it great on a project, for example, you know, the manager can choose to share uh, the comments and entrance with the individual. So it, again, you know, a great feature that will allow managers to be specific and will also allow them to not forget anything that is happening. Yes, shameless plug, good job. <laughs> so the third point would be challenge. Um, and this is, you know, two types of challenges. So first, are there any challenges with uh, your are your direct report suffering or going through any challenges? Um, or are there any, you know, weaknesses as well that you can, that you need to discuss? So, you know, in my previous point, I mentioned that you need to focus on strengths, but of course you cannot forget the weaknesses as well. This is a time for coaching. So you forget on development, um, but also, you know, you try to resolve any issues that might be going on. And also, you know, maybe uh, your direct report or, you know, your employees, they, um, you know, something's changed in their, you know, their job, you know, the daily jobs and they need new projects or assignments. So maybe this is a new time um, or a good time to challenge them now. So, you know, again, on the right hand side, some questions for your managers to open up this conversation. So what new priorities or projects, you know, have have come up that should be included as new goals? Or maybe there are obstacles or challenges that it you know might impact this. So what can we do? Um, do we need to come up with a developmental plan? Do we need to change the goals? Do we need to maybe provide you with new knowledge or skills? And we have to you know decide a training um, a training plan. Um, so these are good questions for your ma managers again to to open up the conversation um, to keep it going with the direct report so that they are um, you know aware of what's going on. And then the last one would be to inspire. You know, again, you know, great reviews are conversations, um, especially, you know, mid-year. You want to check and you want to make sure that managers are, you know, there to support their direct reports and employees on anything that they need to, you know, for the development and career goals. So, you know, at the end, you know, the main focus of this review is to, you know, to make sure that your employees know where they are, um, that they are challenged, and then they have the, the resources that they need. So, you know, the managers should ask, what resources and support, you know, will be required to accomplish the goals, you know, that remain for the rest of the year? Or what are the new goals and what need to be, what, what we need to do to make sure, you know, everybody is successful at the end of the year? So, um, you know, now that, you know, of course, we know what a mid-year is, we know the goals, we know why we want to do it, you know, most of the questions that we get from our clients is, okay, now, you know, as far as creating this review, what should I include? Why, what is different? What is, how is this review different from, you know, the annual review? So I wanted to focus, um, you know, this part of the presentation, I wanted to divide it in three points, uh, which are, you know, the three kind of main questions that we receive. And one of them is like, should we include ratings? You know, the other question would be, should we include competencies or just base it, you know, base this review on goals? Um, and then the third one would be, should I include any open-ended questions or just, you know, it should be behavior driven. So let's uh, focus on ratings. So of course there is no right or wrong um, answer. I just want to, you know, share with you my experience uh, with clients and, and things that I've seen that have worked. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to point out is that we should move away from the ratings. That would be my suggestion. We should leave that for the end of the year. Um, here, at this point, you know, of the year, we should say, are you on track or are you not on track? Maybe it's too soon to tell. It's just a guidance. It's not a number driven. So at the end of the conversation, your employees are not leaving thinking, oh, I only got a three or, oh my goodness, I am a 2.5 and I need to, I only have six months to improve. It's more, you know, it's a checkup. It's a conversation to see where you are. So I would definitely suggest, you know, having, um, you know, a rating skill that is driven by you know, behaviors, not numbers. So in this case, as you can see in the screen, something like on track or not on track um, would be what we would recommend. Um, 
Regarding competencies, so, um, you know, I've seen different scenarios. Again, there is no right or wrong. Um, but what I've seen is that most of our clients will focus just on goals. So they will, you know, go over the performance and, de and developmental goals that were set up. You know, again, as we've mentioned before, the manager will talk to the employee and see if these goals still apply, if there is anything that needs to be changed. But I, um, I've also seen that other clients would also, you know, want to check on, you know, how are the behaviors and the competencies going? Like, I want to check how those are going as well. I don't want to just focus on goals. So what we've seen that it works is just like an overview. Again, are you on track or not on track review of the competencies? I don't know how, you know, you have your forms, uh, your annual reviews set up right now, but, you know, I'm sure that you would be rating, you know, a cheat each um, competency or behavior level. Uh, but what I would suggest here is that you just provide a one, you know, rating or not on track or on track to the entire competency model that you have for your company. Um, you would, of course, you know, maybe you, you have some behaviors that you really want to identify, um, especially, you know, if they're not um, going well, or if they're not being demonstrated well. So, you know, as you can see here, I think is the um, the third example, you know, this client in this case is uh, single out um, the behaviors that are not working so that your managers can put a plan in place to, you know, to develop those and make sure that at the end of the year, again, without any surprises, uh, your employees are successful. Yep, and I'll just add, Hema, I, I think I've seen some clients who have um, rated each competency, but really like very simple, like kind of similar to what you showed on the goals page. So, you know, you're either you're improving or not improving or you're on track. Something very, very simple. If you did want to show each individual competency, then maybe making the rating scale much more um, straightforward with only a couple different choices might be good too. And then the last uh, question that we, you know, that we get is, should we add any open-ended questions? And, you know, my suggestion would be yes. And maybe the more, the better. Of course, you don't want to make the process very long or the form very long. Um, but yeah, these, um, you know, the text, and all the feedback that you're going to get from these questions is what is really very, you know, what is really valuable at this time of the year. So, yes, you know, ask about his strengths and weaknesses, ask about, you know, employee feedback, any type of questions that is going to, um, you know, allow the manager open up the conversation with the employee are very, I would definitely recommend that. So, you know, now that you know that you want to do the process, um, that you see the value that you have your form design, another question that we get from our clients is what is the best process? You know, if the feedback that we get and, you know, that Kelly already mentioned is that, you know, the annual review is kind of, it, it's, it's, it's being seen as negative. It's a long process and I know managers sometimes drag, you know, the employees. Um, so if you want this process, the mid-year uh, review to be successful, we would definitely encourage you to keep it simple. So, you know, first question, should you include a self-review? Um, so you, of course, want to get the employee's feedback. You want to know where they are. You want to make sure that there are not big gaps between the manager and the employee feedback, but you can make, you know, the self-review optional. You don't have to require. So that would be up to the employee to provide that feedback if they want to. So that will definitely expedite the process. Um, should there be an approval step? So maybe you have an approval step at the annual review, but we would not encourage you to have one here. You know, again, we want to keep it simple and fast. It's basically a conversation. It's not a formal review. So, you know, fill out the form, both the manager and the employee, have that meeting, have that conversation and sign off and continue working, you know, towards the end of the year. And I'll just add to that too. Um... You know, one of the great things about if you're if you're doing reviews in Talent Quest and you are a higher level manager or a manager of managers, um, then you know maybe you, you may think to yourself, "Well, I want an approval step so that that manager has visibility." But they don't have to be part of the process and they don't have to hold things up. They can just view those reviews if they want. They automatically have access to them, so that's kind of mm -hmm. a nice a nice feature. Mm -hmm. So um, now that you have all the information that you need to create your process, um, let us help you to identify how we can get everyone on board. And, um, you know, Kelly will have a lot of information for you. Great. Thanks. All right. So a successful rollout. Um, kind of just basic change management here, but um, we want to prepare, manage, and reinforce. So let's talk about how we can use this basic framework to have a successful rollout of our, our mid-year reviews. And, and I'll just mention too, I, I, we've said a lot about mid-years, but if you're already doing mid-years, maybe you're considering 
quarterly reviews. So this really applies in either of these instances. And the more, if you're a culture that, that can barely handle annuals right now, then consider mid-years. If you're doing mid-years already, maybe consider you know, quarterly. And I think either of those is a great option. So prepare. Um, you know, preparation is the key to success, right? So, so just kind of designing this form and, and pushing it out to your population, that's a, that's a great way to do it quickly. But the more prepared we are and the more we've thought things through and, and prepared for all the different scenarios, the better off uh, we'll be in terms of our chances of success. Um, so prepare, we kind of divide into three basic steps here. First, we want to define. So define the objective of, you know, why we're actually doing this. What, why are we doing mid-year reviews? What, what's the goal? What's the end goal? And also, um, how are we going to measure whether or not this is successful? And that could be things such as let's look at turnover, let's look at productivity, let's look at job satisfaction, and see if year over year those things are changing um, once we implement this process. And then, of course, define the scope. So that, you know, maybe who are we going to include in this, in this additional review process? Um, what kind of training do we want to provide to them? And um, what resources do we need? And what kind of a team do we need to assemble in order to um, manage this rollout? And then also kind of the high level timeline and milestones. So when are we going to do these? And what are we going to do um, leading up to that to be ready for it? Second, we want to prepare. So um, this is basically the time where you are educating the individuals you've assembled to help you roll this out. And if it's just you, you may not have that much to do about this, but there's going to be people that are involved that you may not even anticipate at this point. The more you can identify who those people are and then prepare them for this, the better. And really, that's kind of letting everybody know about why we're doing this. So let's create awareness and explain the business reason. And ultimately, we want to inspire them to get them on board with this. Um, and what we've seen work really well is if you have a big team of people, um, the, you know, the more people you can get involved and involve in those decisions and be active participants of defining what this is going to look like, the more you're going to build wider spread support and adoption for this. So that's important to do in this preparation phase. You know, you may be thinking of it only as once you roll it out, but the more buildup you can get and the more momentum with positive um, support and adoption, the better off you'll have at success with this. And then lastly, sponsor. So um, it's really important to have executive sponsorship in order to roll out any kind of change effectively. And let's take a minute and just remind ourselves that, that having somebody support or be supportive of this is not the same as having a sponsor. So you could have a CEO who green lights this idea and this concept and is on board, but they may not be your sponsor. So look for those key individuals in different areas of the organization at different levels and actively recruit them and solicit them to be sponsors for this and explain you know, what that involves and, and what you're expecting for them in terms of maybe they're going to help you communicate, maybe they're going to be part of your training. Um, anytime you can pull in executives and get them to kind of be advocates of your process and be sponsors, the, again, the more successful this will be. So second is manage. Um, and in this phase, we're really developing and defining, you know, the details here, right? We're, we're looking at the guts of the review form. We're looking at the actual details of the process. We're looking at the timeline um, and defining all of that. And Hema gave you some great tips on what to include and how to include it. Um, but then also, we've got to think about our training and our communication. So we need to identify... Um, you know, what we, um, what kind of training we want to provide to our managers and our employees, when we want to provide it, what format are we going to deliver it in, and same with communication. So, you know, how are we going to communicate this to our employees? When are we going to communicate to them? And what avenue, avenues or channels should we use to deliver this communication? And then it's really just launching and going live and implementing the plan. And I put down here, you know, three times, communicate, 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 because uh, time and time again, I see our, our clients, you know, they, they send out one email and then that's it. And, you know, we're all in this day and age of one email just goes sometimes in one ear and out the other or in your inbox into a folder. 
and the details of that communication get overlooked. And then all of a sudden you've got a bunch of people, you know, up in arms about, well, I didn't hear about this. I didn't see this. I didn't know about it. So my answer to that is kind of, is what our communications team here and Dina would tell us is communicate and re-communicate and communicate again. So, you know, give plenty of warning and deliver that message in different avenues multiple times. And then train. Um, we may think, well, look, we're already doing this annually, so what kind of additional training do I need to provide here? Well, the answer is provide training. Don't just automatically assume that, that people are, know how to do this, that your managers know what this conversation should consist of, that they um, understand what they should be delivering during a mid-year um, or a more frequent review. Give them the tools they need to be successful with this uh, additional format, additional um, review form or process. Um, let them understand, you know, how to deliver tough messages, reinforce that continuous feedback process, give them tools to, um, you know, how do we schedule more frequent reviews leading up to the, to the mid-year, leading up to the annual? How do we rate people effectively? How do we give more effective feedback? How do we put a development plan together for our employees? And then, of course, you can couple that with any kind of system or technical training you need, but really, Training in this sense needs to come down to more about the process, how to be effective as a, as a manager in this new context. And then, like I said, we go live. We launch the process. Once the process is launched, though, we're not done. Um, it's really important after we launch this additional format to take a moment and collect feedback. Find out what worked and what didn't, and, um, and then diagnose that those gaps and try to manage any resistance that you're getting from it. So as much as we can try to anticipate any resistance, the um, ultimate realization is there will be resistance no matter what you can do, what, no matter what you plan for. But take that feedback and try to understand where the resistance is stemming from. Um, if it's just a conflict of timing or the form is too long or the questions are too vague, um, you know, adapt and tweak. So implement corrective actions, right? Um, we got feedback, we took it, and then we adopted. So this is less likely to be, you know, a once and done, we've got it right the first time. That never happens, and that's okay. But hear the feedback, take it into account, and then figure out how we want to tweak things going forward. And, and that's a continuous process, and it may not be once we get feedback, and maybe a couple years before we really fine-tune it and get it right, and that's okay. And finally, you know, let's just celebrate the success. Um, we worked hard. We did a good job rolling things out. And wherever you do um, find little wins here and there, make sure to celebrate them. Pat yourself on the back and uh, thank your team for helping you with it. But, but really just take a moment and, and celebrate what worked and the good stuff that's coming out of it. And also don't forget to take a look at the data that's resulting from this. Um, you know, our system has numbers behind all of those ratings, so even though we're not showing them or you may not be using them, we've still got information that can be very valuable, and it's great to look at that information year over year and, um, and see, you know, how things evolve over time. So with that, I am going to open the floor for questions, and we will check in with Dina to see what kind of information you all are looking for from us. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly and Hammond. This has been really, really informative. Um, thank you. So we do have a few questions, and I guess I'll start out with um, the first one. Hema, I think this one's more directed towards your point, part of the presentation. And it says, um, would you say mid -year, a mid-year review is more about coaching and not necessarily about feedback? Thank you, Dina. I think that's, that's a great question. And I would say you know, that you have to actually have both. Um, so in my opinion, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel that coaching needs, you know, it's focused on future behavior and it's focused on development and feedback is focused, you know, on the past and, and you know, kind of the things that have happened in the past, not necessarily, you know, development, but more performance. So, you know, as I mentioned, uh, these conversations that happen at the mid-year should be focused on the strengths. So I would say 75%, you know, should be about coaching and, you know, focused on future development. And the 25% should be about feedback and, you know, and about what happened the last, you know, six months, the previous six months. Thank you. And I think, too, um, you know, when you get the, when you deliver the feedback, it ultimately is going to result in 
kind of coaching, right? So mm-hmm. if it's any kind of a, um, if it's any kind of constructive criticisms, then real, as a good manager, you're going to want to take some time and figure out like, how do we, what can we do to help you be successful? What can we do to tweak those behaviors? What kind of tools, training, et cetera, do you need? And that kind of evolves into to coaching. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we do have another question and it reads, you mentioned using open-ended questions during a review. Can you give some examples of these open-ended questions? Um, sure, you know, at the top of my head, you know, things that I can think of that I've helped my clients to implement. Um, you know, many clients, you know, would ask about a specific strengths and your know, specific weaknesses. Uh, we've also seen, uh, you know, a lot about, you know, what this individual or this employee should continue or start or stop doing. So that way, you know, you get those specific, again, behaviors or, um, you know, actions that you should either develop, you know, or, um, you know, give feedback to change. So those would be, you know, the main, any, any question that is going to help managers to open up the conversation, um, you know, and deepen and strength that relationship between the manager and the, and the employee, you know, are welcome in that form. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say too, um, that sometimes the struggle has been that I've experienced with my clients is that they, they want this form to be simple and they don't want it to be too hard or too long to fill out. So they keep it purposefully, um, very, I'm not vague, but you know, if you have a two point scale, you're meeting or you're not meeting, then, then, or you're just rating all of the competencies and not each specific one, you are going to inevitably lead to some areas where you might be, the manager might gloss over or skip over because we weren't prompting them to be so specific. So any kind of questions that might prompt someone to like, I think you had a great example on one of your slides, Emma, that said, which of the competencies above or something like that, um, is is not are not or are need need development or something like that. So you know we don't want to set them up if they think everything went well in the mid year and then we get to the end of the year and oh oh wait no 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 not here this this competency you didn't do so good at and then they're surprised. So the more we can kind of sol- uh, elicit or solicit that type of specific information without um, forcing it and still keeping the form simple, the better. Um, keep these great questions coming, everyone. These are great. Our next question says, um, in our organization, mid-year reviews are optional. Some divisions do them formally and some do them informally. How can we reinforce documentation and the formality of the process? Well, and that's a good point. Um, You know, different business leaders like to do things differently. Um, I think that reinforcing, well, I think as an organization, it's good to make a decision one way or the other. So, Try to keep the process the same throughout if you can. Um, so if if the decision is to make them all optional, fine. If the decision is to make them all permanent, I think the, or required, I think that's better. But if you can't do that, then I think it's important to kind of just follow up and make sure if you have an automated tool in place like Talent Quest, then you have the option of reminders and you have the option of checking status. And even if you can technically keep it optional you can follow up with those individuals. You can have the system prompt them to to provide that feedback. And then also I would say supplement it with training so that people understand the importance of, you know, what this is here to accomplish, make, help them realize that it's not just um, an administrative task and to kind of help them see the benefits of it. So I think that will help your adoption as well. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Our next question would be, Hema said to stay away from ratings and instead indicate on track or not on track. Um, would indicating someone is not on track have the same effect as a low performance score? Um, yes. Um, and, you know, as Kelly mentioned, we also have numbers behind, you know, those statements on track or not on track that can, you know, benefit, you know, managers and upper management as far as, you know, when you gather the data. But I think from the employee's perspective, you know, they, um, while they might say they're they're not on track, uh, you know, they have an opportunity to get on track. It's not, oh, well, you know, you have a one. It's, um, I think numbers um, are seen more negative, more like you're under, you know, these, you know, you're underperforming. Underperforming, yeah. Yeah. While, um, you know, the the rating scale uh, driven by statements in this case or behaviors, you know, it's seen more more positively. So it's more about the perspective of the employee than the number, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. And I also will say, like, you can get creative with those descriptors, too. Mm -hmm. We've had some clients do some really interesting things on on the descriptions. Like, 
um, you know, instead of saying you're off track, say, you know, honestly, I'm struggling. You could, you could really just use anything like, like that, something that's softer or easier to say, you know, yes, I am struggling and that's okay. And, or, um, then maybe people are more inclined to raise their hand or to identify somebody as struggling as opposed to failing. So, so you can be creative with those verb, that verbiage and, and make it as, um, yeah, as acceptable and as kind of easy to use as possible so that we are honest and that we also realize that this is here to develop. Um, it's not just you're failing. It's something's, we're, something's failing. We're not, we're not giving you the training or I need to provide a development path or, you know, it's not as like, you're just doing a bad job. And that, and I think that's goes back to the point of the numbers is that just looks bad. Like I'm, I'm doing a bad job, but the more um, creative you get with those, those descriptors, the more easy they might be to use. Very good. And we do have one last question here, and it says, um, have you seen clients move away from mid-year reviews in favor of quarterly performance check-ins or pulse checks? If so, how did that approach work? You want me to take a yes, sure. um, yes, I, I think we've seen several, several clients move from mid-year to quarterly or more frequent or, or even just nothing or annual to, to quarterly. So my first suggestion is that I would ease into it. Um, if your culture is not ready to do reviews that quickly on a more formal basis, um, if they're only doing annual or they're hardly doing anything at all, then I would say to start with annual, do it quarter, do it biannually first, and then ease into the quarterly. Um, I would also encourage you to make sure you've got the format simple and the process straightforward, which I know Hema talked a little bit about already, but um, make it as simple and straightforward as possible so that people don't sit on it and wait on it because what we've seen sometimes happen is that the quarterly reviews um, you know get ignored and then before qu quarter you know you're on to quarter two when you haven't even finished your quarter one review or, or that kind of thing so keep the timeline short um, keep the tasks concise and the, the, the process concise so that you can get it done quickly if you're doing it more frequently and make it as easy as possible do you have anything you want to add? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I would also like to add that, yes, you know, in my clients, they are, you know, they're moving towards just continuous feedback all year long. So, yeah, more and more we're seeing where clients just want to, maybe, you know, sometimes a checkup and it's just goals. You know, there are no competencies included, but it's, um, you know, quarterly just to to make sure, you know, that everybody's providing feedback throughout the entire year. Yeah, it could be as simple as just one or two questions yeah. and mm -hmm. one or two steps at the most. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we have for the questions now. And I would just, I'd like to thank Kelly and Hema for their time and their fantastic presentation today. And I'd love to thank everyone online for their time and attention as well. We very much appreciate it. And you should receive an email um, within the next business day with a recording of the webinar as well as a copy of the presentation. Thank you again, ladies, for your time. Thank, thank you, you so much. Everybody have a great afternoon.